Well, hello, Bard Mackey. Thank you so much for joining us here on The Musician Beat. This is our new uh, interview series with all of our players from the symphony, and we're thrilled to have you uh, join us and let us know what you've been up to. How's everything going? Hey, great. Thanks, Jason, for having me this morning. We've been looking forward to it. Yeah, it's great to have you. So um, we had talked a little bit earlier as we were planning this out that we kind of wanted to start with just a brief introduction, get to know you a little bit for folks who, it seems, actually seems inconceivable to me that pretty much anybody watching wouldn't know who you are already, if, at least if they know the symphony. But for those who may not know you personally, tell us a little bit about your background. Sure. Um, as Jason said, my name is Bard Mackey, and I'm the bass trombonist there in the Warren Lucille Ball Symphony. I've played there since 1979, and um, my day job, so to speak, has been a elementary and uh, junior high band director in this area. I taught at Waverly Shell Rock for um, 16 years and then 16 years at Cedar Ball. So like Groundhog Day, if you hang around in a place long enough, sooner or later, everybody knows who you are. And so I guess that kind of applies to me. It's rather modest though, Bart, I think, because when, when I talk to people who studied with you, and I know lots of people who studied music with you, and I mean, there's got to be thousands of, of uh, adults out there now when they were kids who studied with you, um, that's a huge impact. And, and um, you know, I think that shift too from, from working with older kids to younger kids also probably had somewhat of a difference for you in your career. Talk, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I started off with a, a 512 band job up in Grit, Iowa. And um, it, so I got a taste of all the, the different levels and I discovered I liked working with the low guys the most. And so I came back to you and I after teaching there and got my master's in uh, bass trombone performance. And then um, had a family come on the way, had to earn some money. And so um, on the job for Waverly Shell Rock, and that was a seventh and sixth and seventh grade position. And taught with Diana Blake and Roland Brom, my first uh, co-workers up here. They were fantastic, learned a lot from all both of those folks. And like I said, I was there for 16 years. And then um, the job down in Cedar Falls opened up, which is fifth and sixth grade on the north end of town at Anson Lincoln and North Cedar Elementaries and Valley Park. And that's last year before it closed. So I taught there for 16 years and it was just fun. I like working with the little guys and that's that's neat to do. But at the same time, um, playing with the symphony kind of helps me, help me keep my um, whole, my standards high. I could play with fantastic players and I could go listen to you know, beginners all in the same day. So when those fifth graders weren't sounding that in tune, at least you had the symphony outlet uh, to, uh, right. to yeah. keep it, you sane. Can be going totally stir crazy sometimes. Well, I got to say personally, I'm I'm a little bummed that you retired, and and uh, you know it's been a couple of years now. But my kids, if if they had come around a little bit earlier, then they might have even had you for for band, and, and that would have been great for them. But but how long has it been since um, since you've been teaching in the schools? Oh well, let's see. This is my seventh year out. I just finished the seventh year out. I retired in 2013. And so it's hard to believe it's been that long. The time truly does fly in retirement. But I kept kind of busy. I'm teaching up at Warburg as an adjunct, Warburg College here in Waverly for um, some methods classes and some lessons and that sort of thing. And so I haven't and tried to play as much as I can in the area with different groups and all that sort of thing. So you are staying pretty busy, even though I guess theoretically you're, you're retired, but it sounds like you're not yeah. really quite retired. I, I don't sit well. I need to just ask my wife. I do not handle free time well and so it's good that I keep busy otherwise I drive her crazy. Yeah well uh, I'm glad we got got you to sit down here for a couple minutes for the interview. I know you probably want to head out and, and do something once uh, once the, you know this interview is over we got this nice summer weather so we won't keep you too long but uh, one of the things that that we wanted to talk about in this series is kind of the impact of uh, this whole situation with the pandemic and as people may know, this has um, not necessarily hit all businesses and, and all endeavors kind of equally. And one of the hardest hit areas, as people may know, is the performing arts. So tell us a little bit about kind of what's happened to you since all the onset of this uh, pandemic and kind of your perspective on the whole situation here. Sure. Wow. Well, bluntly, it just it put it came, everything came to a screeching halt. We had a concert, I believe, the first weekend in March. Went well, great time, and next thing we know, on uh, St. Patrick's Day, everything stops. And as of that, after that moment, uh, I used to carry a few private students. Um, there was Easter gigs, everything, everything just stopped. It just simply didn't happen, and so we lost the end of the symphony uh, season, which we had some good stuff planned, and I was looking forward to. Um, financially, I'm okay because of the uh, you know I'm retired, and this is just you know kind of extra income, so to speak. But I know a lot of my friends. Who play for a living, they were impacted quite heavily. And 
you know, my thoughts and prayers obviously to them because they've got it far harder than I do. I've been very fortunate with my situation, but um, I know between the, well, the college quit early, the, um, the symphony, you know, couldn't go on. And I understand that the, um, well, the performing arts is probably going to be one of the last things to come back, you know, full force just because of the nature of the beast, you know, between the performers all sitting close together and the audience, you know, sitting close in the auditorium and in a big enclosed space, that's pretty much a textbook example of what not to do. So I'm hoping for, well, obviously a vaccine would just knock all this out of the park, but you know, until then, it could, things would be kind of strange. Yeah, I agree. And that's something we're talking about a lot at the symphony. And, uh, you know, it's interesting you mentioned that too, with, with, with the two sides of this, you know, we as musicians are close together when we work and, and we're also breathing a lot. So that, <laughs> that adds to the, to the mix. And then of course the audience, but, but you are involved with some ensembles or at least one that has been looking at ways to perform for an audience. Just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, the uh, Waterloo Municipal Band that I perform in during the summer, um, we are trying a little something different. They've opened up the uh, Riverloo Plaza downtown Waterloo. And so we're going to begin concerts on July 2nd, um, 7.30, with a um, concert every Thursday in July, in which we will be spaced six feet apart down there on that plaza. We have 37 members. and. It's going to be like a very large spread apart band, if you can envision that. And audience members will be six feet apart. There's plenty of room there for between 300 and 350 people. And in order to ensure that we don't exceed that number, we're going to a system of reservations where you come in and check in and they will take your temperature and you can come on in and have a seat and enjoy the concerts. The concerts will be 45 minutes long. All Everything's outdoors. We're going to rehearse outdoors, perform outdoors. Everybody's safe. It should be a good, it'll be really kind of interesting and nice to get back playing with friends again. Yeah, uh, we're watching that closely at the symphony to see how it goes. And, and I think it's wonderful that the Center for the Arts and the Municipal Band have been able to work together to come up with that plan and to try to, you know, ensure that it's a really safe environment because we want to be able to join, join music together. I mean, you know, I'll let you speak to this, but I really miss getting together with other musicians and, and folks may not realize the emotional impact of that. Oh, yes, it's, it's just... It's okay to play at your house, it's fun to practice and play songs and that sort of thing, but one of the main sources of joy and you know, pleasure in music is doing it with your friends and colleagues and that sort of thing. And when that avenue is taken away virtually, you know, exclusively, then that, that's kind of a big hole. And I guess I just, you know, we all musicians know that it's a big part of our life socially, but when you take it all away, I guess I didn't realize it was quite as big socially as, as what it is. And so it, it's gonna be, gonna be nice to play. Um, yeah, Waterloo Center for the Arts, Kent Schenkel, has been fantastic working with us every step of the way. They want to do it right. I think it'll be neat. Yeah, that's a great team over there. And I think I think we're going to really, uh, from the symphony end of things, really watch what you guys do and, and see if that if that might make sense as a way for the symphony to move forward, too, for the time being. Because, right, right. Yeah, like, like you great. said, we're just, we're just kind of... We're probably in it for the long haul until until there's a vaccine and, and we've got to do these alternatives. But but like I said, what you described um, sounds like a really promising experience. And so uh, hopefully for us as musicians and also for audiences to have some measure of coming back to live music will be mm -hmm. really, really exciting this summer. Well, just out of curiosity, what, what other plans do you have this summer? I mean, uh, maybe not some musical plans, maybe some other plans. Are there other things you're up to aside from looking at the uh, municipal band season or are you teaching lessons online? Or what, what other things are you up to? Um, no, I haven't done the online lesson teaching yet. Probably do that this um, this fall with the Warburg kids. I'm doing a lot of gardening right out my window here. It's like my salsa garden that I've got going. My wife and I are going to take some trips to uh, camping once the campground thing gets straightened out in our little teardrop camper. Um, it's kind of an open summer. It's, it's kind of unusual because usually the bands would take up four nights, two, between two and four nights a week for two months and so and we fill up August, but now kind of every month is August. And so we're actually kind of having to find ways to, to keep up our time. Yeah, we're doing the same thing with our kids too. It's like summer camp's gone, all the activities are gone. So it's it's endless August here. <laughs> That's a good way to exactly. put it. Exactly. Every day is the same. Yeah, it's a good way to put it. Well, you know, um, I, I've been at the symphony now for a while. I'm, not, I'm no longer the uh, young kid on the block. But one of the things I, I love about this organization, but just being a musician in the Cedar Valley is getting to know 
so many wonderful musical personalities who have been here for a generation or more and the stories going back to Joe Junta and, and other other directors of the orchestras and the ensembles or even people like Diana you mentioned earlier still still active as a director here in the area so um, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you to tell us a little bit about uh, a memory from playing in the symphony that uh, you might want to might want to share with our listeners today. Oh gosh, there's so many after what it was it 41 years. I guess they, they all sort of you know go together. But oh, okay, so I'll relate to one of my very first concert, my very first concert. Okay, it's 1979 October, and we had a big barn burner planning on. Uh, you know, coming up and I was standing on stage, scared spitless because it was my first symphony performance on stage there at West High in the First Rock Auditorium. And uh, Fritz Kinzig was the principal too, but then he was standing next to me and, and we were, Joe came out on stage and we had wild applause and all this sort of thing. And um, uh, so just as we're getting ready to sit back down again, Fritz turns to me and says, hey, be ready because the downbeat will come when the miniature painting hits the sea. Of course, I turned to him and said, well, what? not knowing what he said and so sure enough sat down down beat bam and i was still putting my heart in my face i missed the first measure just because i was nowhere near ready and thought well that's certainly not an auspicious beginning to my career here in the symphony to not be ready for the first no but i learned my lesson and thereafter the second he turned around i was taking my breath and so it worked out well, I'd say if I'd say if you've been in the symphony for forty-one years, uh, it worked out okay, even though that first note may not have been quite at the right uh-huh. time. <laughs> well, you know, I'd say this, Bard. You're always safe with me because I always walk out and chat with the audience for a few minutes. You can do whatever you need to do back there before the music starts. <laughs> yeah, we got time. We know what's going to happen. Yeah. Plus, in the in the brass section, I know you guys always have some other diversions if you need them because in the end, uh, folks may not realize the brass players end up playing. Oh, I don't know, you know, only half the time or so because much of the music doesn't use the brass instruments. And so that's kind right. of an interesting aspect of playing a brass or a percussion instrument, even wind to some degree. Yeah, there's a lot of periods of rest, and which is okay because 99% of the time it's great music. So listening to great music while you count your rest is just fine. It's kind of fun. And in some of the more familiar tunes, you know them by heart anyway. And so you just play along in your head. But yeah, that's it's a lot of. Oh, a lot of easy things, but also there's waiting for half an hour only to come in on like your worst note at a very loud level, and hopefully you won't come in at one count early because that would be bad. And so that's where that's where hopefully I can help you out. Probably I've let you down in the past, but hopefully <laughs> make sure everybody know. everybody knows where they're supposed to be. <laughs> Well, and I know too, you know, the, the last thing I was going to mention about playing a brass instrument, it can be very physically taxing. Uh, I'm not sure that that uh, non-musicians or people who haven't played an instrument in a long time uh, can kind of feel the, the level of physical demand that some of these concerts put on us. And I know even at the symphony, even, even if it's a piece that doesn't feature the brass end to end, like you said, sometimes it's the... the uh, the amount of playing, the magnitude of playing. Other times it's waiting and then having to play cold and just come in. So what uh, do you have any strategies or anything you've done in the past to help yourself with that stuff? Well, I try to, I try to keep you in good shape overall, you know, just, you know, playing wise and that you'll be able to play that sort of thing. And when their numbers come up that are taxing, you know, just kind of build up to build up the endurance. But most of it actually I've learned over the years is more mental and not second guessing yourself. If you pick up your horn, knowing exactly where you are and, Coming in with confidence and knowing, okay, yep, this is the spot, no worries, we have this, and um, it's mostly in your head, but there's a certain amount of physicality to it, too, which I enjoy. Yeah. I like that part. Yeah, that's a great point. I feel just like you do. There's kind of the physical side, and then there's the inner game, too, and that's mm-hmm. that's so important. Well, that's fascinating stuff. I'm sure people are going to be thrilled to uh, learn a little bit more about this. Anything else you'd like to uh, share before we wrap up our interview? Well, just then I hope that people will give us a chance in the fall with whatever our plans may be, you know, that, you know, to the audience members don't give up, you know, things will get better. You know, the orchestras will be back. The audiences will be back. Maybe not as fast as what we want them to, but we're going to need some, you know, need some support there and bodies and just come on and, you know, everybody be safe, use your head and we'll make it through this. And, you know, please hang in there with us. We'll be back. I second that, Bart, and I think I think patience is a virtue right now, but we're working really hard to make sure that we can create new music that's going to really enliven people's lives, and, and hopefully over time we, we come back to normal. Well, I really I really appreciate you uh, joining us on the Musician Beat today, Bart, and I'm sure we'll be seeing you again soon on some of our other upcoming programs. Thanks again. <laughs>